All right, thanks so much. Really glad to be here uh, today with everyone. Uh, my name is Russ Rutledge. I'm the Senior Director of Intersource and Collaboration at WellSky. Really happy to take a few minutes with you to talk about how we're uh, scaling out particular situations around Intersource with the concept of a, a core team. I'll talk a little bit about what brought us into that situation, what we're doing about it, and how it's going. Uh, while we're going along, uh, I'll be uh, listening and watching. You can just go ahead and put any questions into the chat. Uh, we'll try to kind of answer them uh, in, in real time as you have them. Uh, and then anything we can't get to, we'll find time afterwards uh, to connect. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and do it. All right. So uh, I'm going to tell a situation that I uh, uh, came across in my, my inner source journey of a particular code repository uh, that was set in, as Intersource. Now, a little bit about this Intersource project. Uh, this project was a key strategic initiative for the whole company. It was something that was meant to move all business units forward. And uh, leadership was uh, aligned, uh, you know, all the, all, all the VPs, all the senior leadership of the company was aligned that uh, all the business units were to use this key strategic uh, project. And in order for it to be shared widely and make sure that it met everyone's needs, uh, everyone was on board uh, from the top down that any functionality that business units needed was gonna come in via inner source contribution, okay? So you need something in it, you don't want it, as you're, as you're integrating it, go ahead and contribute via inner source. Uh, through uh, viewing and uh, being engaged with material in the inner source commons, uh, things were set up so that there is a trusted committer that was uh, set up from each business unit who was trained on the project and can facilitate any contributions uh, that folks had. Okay, so that was the uh, the setup of this particular inner source project, and uh, people started contributing. Business units started onboarding to the the project, and uh, more started uh, coming on. So this project got a whole lot of activity. So there's a lot here that's set up for success. You know, there's support in terms of uh, senior leadership, support in terms of trusted committer. But even with all this uh, 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 support and interest and involvement in Intersource, uh, we still noticed uh, uh, a little bit of instability as this project was being uh, built out. Okay, so as things went on, uh, we started encountering uh, some difficulties toward the project meeting its goals. Uh, uh, breaks came uh, both in the build in terms of functionality uh, deployment. We saw breaks, regressions, and failures. As the project grew, it became a little bit more difficult every time there were changes for the next business unit to be able to onboard. So there's on, onboarding difficulty. And then also another difficulty we saw in this setup, uh, another result that we saw, was that despite uh, everything being intersourced and everyone contributing to one place, we began to see duplicated work. Okay? And this wasn't duplicated work in terms of the end functionality of the project. Like all the end user facing features, uh, they could be contributed just once and everyone could use them. That was great. Uh, the duplicated work came more in the core infrastructure of the project, uh, kind of around some of the things that we saw here. We ended up with each business unit constructing their own way of building the project um, uh, around functionality and regressions uh, as business units wanted to make sure that the project was stable. We ended up with multiple test frameworks. At one point, we had three different test frameworks <laughs> running on the project, uh, four different ways of deploying. So uh, this setup was really great for making sure that via intersource contributions, uh, there was one project that can meet everyone's needs as far as end user facing functionality, but in that core infrastructure, build, test, deploy, uh, operations and monitoring, uh, those behind the scenes infrastructure that makes the project work, uh, we saw more difficulty, more breaks and duplication of work. And so there's discussion about what to do about it. And you know, one path, and something that was tried for a while, uh, was an appeal to altruism and uh, uh, people uh, coming together to do the right thing. Uh, the conversation went like, you know, well, all of us business units, we all need these things to work. You know, we need a good test framework. We need a stable uh, build process and so on. Uh, we should do the right thing and each prioritize a little bit of work. Let's uh, come together and make it happen. 
And that appeal to it's, it's the right thing. It's something that we all need. It worked for a little bit, but it wasn't sustainable. And so we were looking for a way to make sure that uh, even without an appeal to the greater good or, or some kind of uh, uh, moral or, or best for the business motivation to take care of that core infrastructure, we wanted each business unit to be able to be laser focused in their specific objectives and still have the whole project ecosystem work, right? So that was our situation and uh, what we were running up against. And what we tried, which is working well, uh, which is written up uh, also as an inner source pattern, is the concept of forming a core team around this inner source project. Now, just because there's a core team assigned to the inner source project doesn't mean that this team does all the work. The core team uh, is responsible for the core infrastructure of the project. Uh, things like I've shown here on the slide, making sure that uh, the project is modular and well factored, well componentized, that makes it easy to contribute. Making sure there's clear uh, versioning and upgrade path, continuous deployment, continuous integration, automated testing, uh, and much more, uh, you know, security checks uh, are implemented and, and working correctly. Production operations and monitoring are easy to do. The core team takes care of all the things that make the project easy to use and easy to contribute to without, without having it break. Having this solid foundation and solid platform then allows our business units and their inner source uh, by their inner source contributions to contribute the features that are needed for their specific business roadmap. In this way, by, uh, by splitting out the responsibilities, the core team can be, be laser focused in creating a stable project uh, that's easy to contribute to and continues to work. In effect, this platform um, uh, makes it easy for contributions to come in and also protects contributors from each other so that uh, there's not accidentally a break you know, from one that affects, affects someone else. So it keeps everyone safe and easy to contribute. Uh, the business units can then be laser focused on the things that their business unit needs for, uh, for whatever customer and client objectives that business unit is pursuing. So they can prioritize uh, those features based on that. Okay. So with this uh, uh, setup, we we're able to see much more success. And I want to, I had said earlier, uh, this uh, concept and this diagram is written up as an inner source pattern. So you can go ahead and read about it online for more information about how to set this up. Uh, also, even though I'm the one presenting this, I wanna give credit to uh, another member of the inner source commons community, Sebastian Spear who was instrumental in making sure that this concept was written up as a pattern and contributed heavily to the diagram and visualization that we're looking at here. So thanks so much, Sebastian. By splitting out these responsibilities, core team taking care of the core project infrastructure, inner source contributors looking at features, we will say, see improvement in the areas where previously we had difficulty, improvement in the stability of production deployments of the project. And also with things being modular versions, easily testable, uh, the count of contributions, the amount of contributions were able to increase because it was easier. Uh, more business units and people were able to onboard to the project. Okay? And these specific areas are those that we give to the core team as a way of understanding and rating their success. So the, uh, the core team, you know, while a, a full-time scrum team uh, uh, rate and value their success and impact a little bit differently than our other feature teams. Most feature teams will rate their success by features delivered along some product roadmap. Uh, the core team is an enabling team and there are KPIs and data-driven ways of representing production stability, uh, count of contributions and active users of the project. And those KPIs are the success metrics for the core team. So their backlog and what pieces of infrastructure they pursue are designed around what's going to help these items that you see on the screen, what's going to help them improve. And so it's no accident that they do improve because the core team is focused on them. Uh, in a word or three words, the core team makes sure that the project is easy to onboard uh, for an inner source contrib contributor, easy to improve by giving a contribution, and then easy to operate in, in production. So we had a path on reaching this concept of forming a, a core team. And I wanna put it in context on a continuum of inner source activity. 
Uh, when you think about intersource, intersource is related to where con code contributions come from. And the project in my example had a model where all contributions of code are intersource contributions. They're coming from someone that's not necessarily uh, an owner of the project. That's the way things were, were set up. You know, if you want to change in the, in the project, you must be the one to contribute it. Intersource only, that was the model. That's in contrast to traditional software development that has a dedicated team as the only ones making code contributions to the project. Uh, in this model, if somebody wants to change to the project, you have to convince the dedicated team to spend their time uh, making that contribution and that change. Okay, so that's the kind of a, a continuum there. Uh, you know, inner source only and dedicated team only. So in our situation, we had started out on the left on that inner source only uh, uh, side. And we had seen uh, a difficulty and a problem with that is that nobody was had this part of their job, project infrastructure, keeping it stable. And so, you know, we had, uh, uh, you know, we had uh, breaks, and we had gaps there in the stability of the project infrastructure. So we solved that by coming to this concept of inner source uh, contributions from the general you know, community of users, as well as a, as a core team. And I had shown that. And this pattern can be wonderful if you're in that situation. I want to point out that this pattern around having a core team can also apply if you come from the other side, Okay, if you're coming from the right, having a dedicated team only. In that case, you might run into the problem where uh, there are simply too many requests for new functionality for the dedicated team to keep up. They're a bottleneck, it's behind. The uh, consumers of the project aren't getting the features they need. Uh, in this case, you might also remedy this situation by arriving at the same place that we did of having the dedicated team think of themselves as a core team, facilitating inner source contributions from those that need them. In this way, the, having the dedicated team or core team is no longer the bottleneck. Any, any uh, consumer of the project that needs new functionality is enabled to contribute it, to contribute themselves. So this pattern can apply uh, for problems on either side. Coming to the same middle blend of responsibilities can be a way to remedy both of these situations. Well, there's a lot more involved in this, uh, you know, specifics about how to set this up, uh, gotchas and uh, other patterns for success. You can read more uh, on that link that I shared earlier in the inner source patterns handbook around the core team. Also, I'm uh, happy to talk. Uh, you can find me in the inner source common Slack uh, with the Russ handle. Uh, also, as a, a plug, if any of these concepts are interesting to you, uh, we are hiring for core team members on inner source projects at WellSky. If you'd like to know more, you can also reach out. Uh, with that, thanks so much. Really glad to be here with you today.